Where does nitric oxide play a role in the overall pre-birth yeah. development of a child? Well, look, nitric oxide is important in from the conception to the delivery of the baby. Number one, you have to have adequate circulation to the placenta. Mm -hmm. Number, oh, let's back up. The sperm, the sperm motility is determined by nitric oxide production. Mm -hmm. Men who have low nitric oxide have low, no, low sperm numbers and low sperm motility. So you can have actual uh, normal levels of sperm, but if the sperm aren't mo mobile enough to get to the egg and fertilize it, then you're not going to be able to conceive. Okay. And so the, during once there's conception, then obviously you have to have new blood vessels supplied, new angiogenesis, new blood vessels basically supplying that growing embryo. And without nitric oxide, you don't get that adequate blood vessel development, angiogenesis, adequate blood supply, and oxygen delivery to that baby. And now that's the same throughout the entire pregnancy. <clears throat> but it's really in the third trimester where you start to see, you know, some women develop preeclampsia, which is the gestational hypertension. And sometimes you'll see gestational diabetes. And if you look at the science of what nitric oxide does, nitric oxide is what dilates the blood vessels, regulates blood pressure, and nitric oxide is what allows for insulin signaling and glucose uptake. So if the mother is nitric oxide deficient for whatever reason, uh -huh. then she's gonna develop high blood pressure and preeclampsia, and she's gonna develop gestational diabetes and lead to insulin resistance. And so how do we overcome that? Number one, pay attention and don't do things that are disrupting nitric oxide production, mm -hmm. and then focus on strategies that restore nitric oxide. But the problem in, in preeclampsia is really the only proven way in so-called the standard of care to save the mother's life from the, the hypertensive crisis in preeclampsia mm -hmm. is to deliver the baby. And now you're delivering a premature baby that's gonna have health consequences mm -hmm. and some liabilities if they have underdeveloped organs. So the whole thought process is if you can, in, in preeclampsia, if you can extend gestation, if you can manage the mother's blood pressure and allow for that baby to incubate inside the mom to full term, now the chances of that baby being delivered healthy are much better. Now the problem with, with most antihypertensives used in preeclampsia is they cause an increase in intracranial pressures and that can lead to seizures in the pregnant mom. And so what nitric oxide does, because it's naturally produced, if we can just restore the production of nitric oxide, we can enhance blood supply to the placenta, to the growing embryo, we can normalize blood pressure, and you don't see an increase in intracranial pressures. Okay. Because we're basically restoring normal physiology. And I think that's why, why the, uh, an important consideration for OB-GYNs who deal with these high-risk pregnancies, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, is yeah. start the conversation on nitric oxide, are these mothers using mouthwash that are destroying the microbiome that's partly responsible for producing nitric oxide? Mm -hmm. Are they using a fluorinated toothpaste that again is an antiseptic killing the oral microbiome that's responsible for producing nitric oxide? Are they eating a, a high sugar diet that's causing the gestational diabetes mm -hmm. and downregulating nitric oxide production and then causing increased risk for preeclampsia? And just modify their diet eliminate the things that are destroying nitric oxide production. And I think what we're, what we're learning is that you can, it can lead to not only an increased probability of conception, mm -hmm. but the development over nine months of that baby yeah. and a successful delivery of a healthy baby without health problems is what we're all looking for.